Next, let's calculate our direct labor variances. Our direct labor variance consists of two variances. We've got the direct labor rate variance and the direct labor efficiency variance. The direct labor rate variance calculates how much of the total labor variance is due to paying a higher or lower wage rate than anticipated. Going back to the example we talked about the Starbucks coffee, we said that we paid our labor at a rate of $10 an hour. Let's say that the economy, current economic conditions were bad and that there was a flood of people looking for jobs. We may have been able to hire somebody for less than $10 an hour. We may have been able to hire somebody for $9.50 an hour. In that case, we paid a lower wage rate than anticipated. So you would have a direct labor rate variance that is favorable. It's less than what we expected to pay. The direct labor efficiency variance measures how much of the total direct labor variance is due to using a greater or lesser amount of time than we anticipated. For example, going back to our coffee cup, let's say that as the person was preparing the coffee, he spilled some coffee on the floor, coffee beans on the floor, and as a result, it took him longer to make the cup of coffee. We took, a, we took more time than we anticipated to make that cup of coffee. It would be shown in the direct labor efficiency variance. It would show us that we had an unfavorable efficiency variance. Let's take a look at an example. Be sure to pause the video and read the question and then we'll continue this in a minute. We're going to use this question to calculate the direct labor efficiency variance as well as the direct labor rate variance. You're going to set up this question the same way we did the direct material problems. So you're going to have your standard quantity times standard price on the right hand side. You're going to have your actual quantity times actual price on the left hand side. And then down the middle you're going to flex your quantity and have actual quantity times standard price. Now this time prices and quantities relate to direct labor not direct materials. Once you have this template down, you go to the data table and fill in the numbers. Let's start with the standard quantities first. The standard quantity was a quarter of an hour, but that quarter of an hour of labor was for one tire. How many tires did we produce during this period? We produced 10,000 tires, so our standard quantity of labor hours that we expect is 2,500, 10,000 times 0.25. Now let's take a look at what the standard direct labor rate was. It was $17.50, which gave you a total labor cost that we expected of $43,750. Next, we're going to take our actual quantity of labor multiplied by the standard price. How much was the actual quantity of labor hours? They told you that the actual quantity spent was 3,200 hours, 3,200 hours. Now we multiply that by the standard price of $17.50, giving you $56,000. Finally, our actual number, we don't really need to calculate anything because they told us they spent $65,000 on their direct labor costs. You've got your three columns, now you can calculate your variances. Your direct labor efficiency variance is 12250 It's a difference between 56000 and 43750 now, is this a favorable or unfavorable? Again, this is a direct labor cost, so cost was expected to be 43750 It actually ended up being 56000 therefore it is an unfavorable variance. Whenever you're calculating variances, always calculate them from the right to the left. The 12250 is your efficiency variance. Next, let's calculate your price uh, rate variance. Your direct labor rate variance is the difference between 65000 and 56000 which is $9,000. Is this favorable or unfavorable? Again, you're going to go from your right to the left. 56000 was what you expected. You ended up with actual of 65000 more. Therefore, it's an unfavorable variance. And again, this is your direct labor rate variance. With direct labor variances, when you add up your rate and efficiency variances, you get a flexible budget variance of 21,250. Again, it's unfavorable. How do we know that? There's two ways of doing this. You can combine the efficiency and the rate, or you can just 
do your entire flexible budget variance, which is we expected a standard cost of 43750 We ended up with actual 65000 giving you 21250 and its unfavorable variance. For direct material and direct labor variance, you need to know how to calculate the price variance and the quantity variance, the rate variance and the efficiency variance, but you also need to know who's responsible for what variance. So let's go back and take a look at the first the direct material price variance. The price variance is a result of purchasing direct materials at a higher or a lower price than we anticipated. Who would be responsible for? Who would we evaluate based on the direct price variance? It would be the purchasing supervisor because the purchasing supervisor's job would be to purchase direct materials and the price they pay for that purchase will be dependent on the purchasing supervisor. The direct material quantity variance is the usage of direct materials. Who uses the direct materials? It would be the production floor. So the production supervisors would be the person to question whenever you're looking at a direct material quantity variance. Who would be responsible for the direct labor rate variance? It could be one of two people. It could be the human resources manager or, or the production supervisors. The human resources department is responsible for hiring people. So if they were able to hire people for a higher or lower rate, they would be responsible for the direct labor rate variance. The direct labor rate variance could also lie within another department, which is a production department. Let's say that the production department went over time and the because they went over time, we had to pay the laborers a time and a half or two times their salary. In that scenario, it would be the production supervisors that would be responsible for the direct labor rate variance and not the human resources. Finally, the production supervisors would be responsible for the direct labor efficiency variance. Efficiency is determined on how well the individuals perform their job during production and that would be relating to production department and that's where they would investigate those variances.